Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's BIM visualization webinar. I'm Stephanie, and I'll be your host. Um, again, thank you for joining us, and we'll go ahead and dive in. Juan, do you want to go to the next slide? All right. So before we get started, I just wanted to go over a few things with you. First, we are recording this webinar and a link will be emailed to you at the end. Uh, so if you can't stay for the entire discussion, don't worry. And also, this is a discussion, so we do encourage participation. If you have any questions, there's a chat box in the bottom right of your screen. Go ahead and send them there. And we'll have some time at the end to go ahead and answer those questions for you. Next slide one. Yep. Um, now that we've covered the, the housekeeping details, we'll go ahead and go over the agenda. Uh, first, I'm going to introduce to you our three speakers for the day, and then we'll dive into our visualization discussion and we'll learn how CG visualizations can leverage your design process, the types of CG content, um, and all kinds of cool stuff. And then after that, we'll have the Q&A, as I mentioned. Um, so now we'll go ahead and go into our introduction. So our first speaker is Jess DiRomaldo. Uh, Jess, do you want to give the audience a little background? Sure. Hi, uh, my name is Jeff DiRomaldo. I'm an uh, associate and senior project manager with Barton Partners. Uh, we are a uh, an architecture firm uh, just outside of the city of Philadelphia, and uh, you know our primary focus is in mixed use and and multifamily. Um, Barton Partners has been uh, together for uh, for over uh, 30 years. I've been with them uh, for about 15 years, and in the field for over 20 years. Uh, so, uh, as the slide indicates, I'm responsible for contracts and scheduling client relationships. So, as a project manager, we see the we see the project from its inception to its eventual close-out. Well, hi, this is Juan Trillo. I'm a project manager of ARC visualization production team. I have over 15 years of experience in the architecture visualization field, but also in the product design and a vehicle presentation for uh, advertising. I've been participating in more than 700 projects so far, and really ha happy to have you here joining in this webinar. Thank you, Juan. And our third speaker is Adam Monk. Yeah, hello, everybody. Uh, <clears throat> thank you for joining. Uh, I'm the national director here for ARC for our BIM services division. So I oversee our, our CAD drafting, 3D modeling, uh, 3D printing, drone services, and of course, what we're all here to talk about today, our visualization department as well. So I think we can go ahead and dive in. And just so I'm clear, Steph, uh, Stephanie and, and Juan, uh, you guys can all hear, hear me okay? Yeah, yes. we're good. All right, perfect, perfect. Well, great. Well, we'll go ahead and dive in here. Go ahead and dive in here. Again, I just want to thank everybody Again, for their time and, and joining here today. Uh, so in the context of our architecture and, and construction industries, uh, we know every project needs to be envisioned, validated, and then ultimately sold, right? So this leads to us to be able, uh, this leads to the importance of our visualizations and really being able to explain our content and our design process through the use of visualization and communications. So things like sketches, 2D drawings, those have all been really fantastic tools throughout the years. We've used those, those as tools to really communicate with our end users and, and clients, owners, developers uh, for, for 200 plus years since, since the, the process has started. And those have all been fine to use, but as things evolve and, and we get better at what we do, visualization really plays a huge part in today's world in capturing the information and data that we want to display and get across to our clients. So even though using drawings or sketches 
might be really accurate information, it really fails to deliver the true vision and intent that we're looking to sell and produce for our clients, uh, especially if, if they don't have a technical background, if they're outside of the architectural or construction world, right? So I think we've all been in those meetings where you know, the, the GC or the architect is, comes into the room and, and shows us, you know, throws down their, their 50, 75, 100, 200 sheets of paper and uh, we're all standing around looking at lines on a piece of paper and, and holistically we all, you know, for the most part probably understand what we're looking at and, and, and doing, but you'll look up and see some glazed eyes and, and, and they understand the, the vision um, but uh, you know they're not really grasping the concepts and visualization really helps push that forward because you can really see when you see a building uh, when you see a residence um, it, from a visualization standpoint you really understand what the intent is from the architect or or designers so obviously some of those challenges that we face is you know shaping the ideas defining the, the design and then obviously engaging other folks in, in the process from your investors, owners, partners, what have you. You can go on to the next slide. So this is really why computer, genera computer generated visualization is plays a relevant and huge role. It really helps us uh, uh, depict our ideas from the very start of the projects all the way through it being built. A visual media production, it consists of realistic computer generated uh, representations. Uh, it gives us the ability to, to get physical accurate simulations, so doing animations, renderings of the real space and real environments. Um, and we can do that with photorealistic precision. This really helps showcase functionality, the aesthetics and the design that you want to portray before anything's even built. So this helps obviously on a number of forefronts, right? So uh, obviously change orders uh, are, are a huge part of construction and design. So if we can mitigate and, and eliminate as much as that as possible uh, through the use of visualization, that's, that's even better for not only us, but, but for the clients as well. And then you can get as granular as you want within these visualization pieces, right? So you can look at you know, different lighting aspects, uh, materials, furniture, different decors that you want to depict, uh, placing the building or residence within its actual uh, real life environment. Uh, all of those things are, are really neat features and functionality that visualization really brings to light that you're not going to obviously get out of your CAD drawings uh, and, and, and sketches. And go on to the next slide there. So obviously knowing that all of our project successes uh, it, it really mainly depends on making the best decisions in a timely manner. And visualization is a fantastic way to be able to do that. It, it allows us to have those informed decisions, uh, cuts down on, on our time for validation, and then really it lets, lets us efficiently collaborate uh, with our partners, our owners, and obviously the key decision makers to move things uh, along in a, in a timely and efficient manner. And I'll pass it over to Juan now. Um, we'll walk through, uh, Juan, I'll kick it over to you to walk through the next few slides. All right, perfect. Thank you very much, Adam. Uh, well, regarding project timeframes, uh, we all know the sooner you provide clear communication of a project's vision, the better the chances you have to get it approved, right? So, well, Here's where CG visualization shines. The best part is that you don't need to wait for the project to be built or even technical drawings to be drafted. You can just start from sketches. In fact, you can start also with an idea, with a merely schematic representation of your project and start developing based on it. 
Additionally, at every stage of the project, there are specific details that designers, developers, and investors may need to redefine. As Adam said before, with CG visualizations, you can bring your design to life and iterate, saving time and money. Another benefit is that you can improve your marketing efforts too. So you can see the future projects in real context and even immerse yourself in them, including more than technical specified details. You can tell a story to sell not just the project, but also an experience, the overall idea or concept of it. You can also, with all these presentations, document your progress and finally get a whole set of marketing ready content that can effectively help you promote your business and finally attract more opportunities. As we all know, digital media is now expanded to different platforms, interactions, and, and hardware. This opens a wide array of options to showcase your projects with cutting edge technology to show the latest uh, of the state of art for your clients. So to summarize the benefits with CG visualizations, you'll be able to let your clients and team see how everything will look like before it is even constructed. Help your clients and team to make informed decisions and engage investors by going beyond technical specs and telling a story that defines a project vision. So maybe Jeff, you can give us some insights on the benefits that you had on our projects. Or... Sure. Um, so as I said before, you know, our 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 market focus is in multifamily. Multifamily has been a pretty strong driver, you know, since we've emerged from recession in terms from a from a sort of a you know built environment standpoint. That's been one of the 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 hot sectors that has kind of been sustained. And there's really a high level of competition in that environment. The, the, con the designs are getting more complex every year. And uh, we're finding that our clients really need uh, a high level of sophisticated visualization to communicate those complex designs to potential tenants, right? So they're, they're really in a, uh, you know, very competitive environment for tenants. And, and once the, uh, one client, you know, really begins to value uh, this level of visualization. We see uh, other clients doing the same, and the bar has been raised. And so, uh, you know, the ability for you know a tenant to go online now, uh, whether on their phone or their computers or whatever, and and just be able to explore a project in great detail exists now. And and so it's it our clients uh, almost to a to a to an entity have 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 have, uh, have seen this and are adapting to it so this we're seeing this happen more often where uh, the once we once we get through a full design process that that there is a really uh, heavy investment in this level of visualization uh, for marketing purposes for lease up purposes so so Jeff uh, just a quick question on that so when you're getting ready to uh, to go into a client's office or, or meeting owners, uh, what have you. Uh, what, what's your what's your take on on going in? You know, let's say it might be a competitive situation um, for your firm. Um, it, just a, can you speak just to just the competitive advantage um, that you feel like this is this brings to your firm uh, rather than potentially other firms that maybe still still do things and display things within the traditional. Uh, manner of you know just showing up with drawings and, and rolls of paper. Sure, sure. I mean, you know, that's it's true to say that to, to be able to have you know from our perspective to work with a large consultant base that has a certain level of sophistication and the fact that we've been able to leverage that sophistication on multiple projects. You know, we can come come to a qualifications meeting and say, you know, we know how to not only design these things but help you kind of meet other more uh, uh, sort of intangible uh, goals of your of your projects and help support you in that manner. You know, we actually do some in-house uh, 3D visualization too. 
And, you know, again, I've worked with Oracle on projects and I'll say that, you know, in terms of, you know, we cannot deliver it in the time frame and, and the quality that Oracle can deliver it in. And so, you know, to the extent that we do it on, in small aspects on our own, but we're just simply not able to deliver it, you know, as economically as Oracle can as, as, and as sophisticated as Oracle can do it. So we're finding more and more on our end that, that this is just a, a valuable service and a valuable partnership for us. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. Yep. Well, good. Well, Juan, I think we're ready to move on to the next portion here. So now that we've got some of the benefits down from our, our visualizations, um, we'll, we'll kind of turn the page here on the next uh, handful of slides. And what we're going to do is actually jump into the different technologies, the different medias, uh, production processes, and then really what's needed to get started uh, when we're looking at uh, taking on new projects. And Juan, I'll turn it back over to you to, to run through the next few slides here uh, on those topics. All right, thank you. So now we're going to walk you through the typical content that can be produced in this field. We basically have four types of, of contents. We have the virtual reality, the 360 tours, animations, and still renderings. And one real quick, in case maybe some folks on uh, on the uh, webinar here, maybe they're not familiar with animations. What what uh, other terminologies do we hear in the industry for that? Yeah, for animation specifically, we can um, also call them fly-throughs, wall-throughs. Yep. Um, then for 360 tours, this is not kind of a well-known technology, but it is also similar to uh, Google Street View visualization. Perfect. Um, then we will dive uh, into them more. Um, for virtual reality is the latest technology that you may be able to see in all the new consumer media yep. that is happening right now. And the still renderings are, are just uh, images, representations of a, of a product of any idea that you may have in mind, right? Yeah, just like a, a nice picture. Perfect. Yeah, yep. that is correct. So, in terms of, uh, well, sorry about that. So, this is what we call virtual reality. This is also a, a fly through of a, a specific um, portion of a, of a 3D environment we created in which you can um, interact with the scene that you have um, in a freely manner by going through the scene, like playing on a PlayStation, basically. You can yeah. use a joystick and see it on screen. And, and it's really simple to uh, right one where we just actually, uh, when we deliver the project, there's just a really simple uh, VR virtual reality button that the client will click uh, on the screen and then be able to, uh, to use that in, in some different facets of, of uh, uh, physical, um, uh, you know, a, a car Google Cardboard box or uh, things of that nature uh, to actually display, you know, from uh, uh, an I iPhone or Android phone or our iPad, if you will, and really get that display of the virtual reality, right? We, we unfortunately, you can't display virtual reality um, through, uh, uh, through a webinar, so yeah. Um, but that that's uh, that's the process. Um, so just everyone's aware of that really simple, yeah. easy to use, uh, one click uh, VR button for everybody. Yeah, once you have access to the media and the right hardware, you can just uh, pull up the the scene and immerse yourself into it by using the the Google Cardboard or even the uh, any VR device that you can get. Those are mostly compatible throughout yep. all the productions. Absolutely. Um, then we have the, what we call, let me just check real quick here. This is what we call the uh, 360 tours. Mm, maybe, there we go. Um, the 360 tours are similar to the VR content production, the virtual reality content production. The only difference is that it's kind of um, capable of being loaded on the web. You can set a website for it and you have pretty fine points of views uh, to walk through the project. You can use also um, a little uh, plan, floor plan 
to select the, the points of view that you are going to go through the project and start looking from that point of view towards the surroundings. Um, you can also make type of interactivity as uh, switching materials and interior design styles here. The, the main difference is that it's most capable of being loaded on the web here. Uh, the virtual reality output is more um, um, device intensive. You need to have better software to run it. And this type of 360 tours, as I said before, is similar, but uh, you don't depend on, on the hardware that you have. Basically, okay. with a standard computer, you'll be able to run it. And 360 tours, one, uh, if I just jump in here, is, is really great for environments that where uh, the clients are trying to display, you know, let's say uh, a vast uh, amount of information or content, right? So, you know, mm -hmm. um, something that comes to mind would be, you know, in, uh, uh, three or four different buildings uh, within a scene or, you know, let's say a, a residential space where, you know, you have uh, 20 different homes, you know, things of that nature where you're, uh, you know, trying to display more than just maybe a singular room or, or singular image. Yeah, that, that is a good point, actually. It, you, we used to offer this type of solutions or this is more suitable for those type of projects, the ones that are a com com close to community projects or maybe open mall areas or amusement parks or even um, we can create all the vegetation so yep. in, in, with this type of software so yep. you can show your projects uh, of any type in this uh, field in this type of technology but overall it is for as you said adam it is for um, wide coverage of a project basically yep. great okay let's move forward to the let me jump jump this in Okay, then we have the, the um, one moment here. Okay, until it, it loads. This is a, another uh, sample for the BR. We have a, um, an overview of the project with all the surrounding. The main focus here is the house. Yeah. And you will see how we can change the, the, the daylight time. The materials for the exteriors yeah and that really leads back into uh the the earlier conversation where we can change it any kind kind of the aesthetics uh the background uh you know as this example is showing a really nice residence where we have all kinds of different foliage um, that the builder might want to show or display uh, and then getting in obviously to the interiors here as well you can see that really neat little map um, that was in the upper right hand corner uh, that gives you the ability to you know go from room to room uh, with easy navigation and again this is obviously just all displaying uh, the ability to get in and change you know color palettes or uh, different environments um, uh, real time right uh, with with the clients or, or potential home buyers in this example um, giving them the options to pick uh, through different options, real time, uh, on site or on scene. You can also add an interactivity as opening doors and windows, or even turning on and off the lights to see the different lighting conditions of the project. So this is a, um, let's say a no limits type of solution. You can put everything that makes a real project into it. Then this is a, as I uh, introduced before, the 360 tour, as you can see, you have the uh, floor plan in which you can select the hotspots of the project. And once you select one, you just uh, are transferred to that point of view, similar to how Google uh, Street View works, but with an entirely CG uh, production in place. Uh, in this project, you can see also the actual point of view that uh, from the exteriors that this project will have. Those are actual photographs outside. Okay, so as you can see, you can also change the, the interior design of the project. This is a project in which uh, we had two alternate designs for the same floor plan. 
and the whole furniture has changed in this particular switcher. You can also include motion media, as you seen on the TV with videos and maybe additional information as um, uh, product information, um, let's say for quotation or something like that. Uh, material specifications, you can add tags or any detail that you need can be included in this interface. This is also smartphone capable. Then we move forward to the animations. As you may know, these are practically or basically videos of uh, CG production in which uh, things and details can be animated in different styles. On the right hand side, we have a typical fly through or flyover of a project in which we approach on a predefined path and we see the details of the context and also the project itself. And on the left hand side, we have what we call the construction sequence. It is uh, also known as a time lapse animation in which you compress and accelerate the timing of a real situation. Let's say in this case, a construction of a building. We set a static camera and see how things progress on the construction. You can, of course, set these cameras for the construction sequences uh, moving to, all right? You can also set a fly through with a construction sequence in place. So these are basically the, the typical animation outputs that can be produced with this technology. You bet. And one, uh, just to clarify, we could do the animations uh, both from an exterior and an interior standpoint. Yes, that is correct. Okay. Uh, at the beginning of the samples, we shown a, a fly through of, a, of the interior of a house that can be placed anywhere you, you like and anywhere you can focus or need to focus on the project. Sometimes our clients have some parts of the project development while others are under development. So right. we just focus on that part, select the camera path that is more convenient to get an approval on that stage and move forward with the production. And then we can um continue with the other parts of the projects if needed great all right then we have the what you may already hear of is the still renderings those are like taking pictures of of an overall idea of a project um we don't only uh, base on the, the specified details of of the documentation we have um you can also focus on expressing an idea. In this case, as you can see in this image, um, we could have followed the specifications of the furniture and only the details that were specified. But we also uh, can take the time to put uh, additional details that can indicate what type of office this is, all right? Um, and also add people and entourage to it so you can express the overall concept of the uses of that of that project in this uh, type of media the the basic uh, benefit is that you can um, the predefine the point of view that best um, shows your project that best depicts your project uh, this is sometimes a difficult task because you have to select a specific one but in this uh, area um, it is kind of a uh, we can provide the experience of a, of a photographer that can select the best point of view for you. Yeah, that's great, Juan. Uh, just everything from the, the decor on, on there is, is fantastic, where you can get into, you know, just the, the different books and different decor you, you know, you're able to put on uh, on the bookshelf. That's, uh, that, that kind of detail is just fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also the lighting plays a, a really important role in the visualization. You can set a mood and um, in, in order to get the best of a project in one picture, that is, that is, th those are all the details that you can include to, to make your project shine at the moment in getting an approval or maybe in getting investors for it. Mm -hmm. Great. So Adam, this is now the process and input. 
you can go ahead with it. Yeah, thank you, Juan. So as you can see on the screen right now, we have a very detailed uh, uh, stage development process, if you will. Uh, one thing that we do here that, that at ARC uh, that we take very seriously for all of our clients is our communication. And this really outlines what our communication will be, uh, whether you're working with us from a, a sketch rendering or a virtual reality scene and anything and everything in between. So we really take the time to sit down with you, Juan or someone from uh, another project manager uh, from Juan's team will be in touch with you on a, you know, let's say a daily basis, if you will, uh, to really understand and grasp uh, the ideas and content uh, uh, from what we're trying to display out of your visualization piece. And these are just the different uh, stages that we really like to try to focus in on and make sure uh, we have everything in the right place and order uh, for our clients. Now, obviously, uh, just dependent on uh, a variety of, of, of things that happen uh, within uh, the, the progress of, of the rendering or animation, some of these uh, can be moved ahead or, or back, just depending on the information that, that uh, we're working with, uh, with with you as our client. So um, we, we, we just wanted to display of, uh, just this portion and, and piece to let, let you guys know as our potential clients and existing clients, we really do try to make sure we uh, uh, capture all of the data and information that's pertinent to having a really successful visualization piece for you. And, and uh, I, I'd like to um, actually bring in um, Jeff back into the conversation again. And, and Jeff, can you just share you know, 30 seconds to a minute of, of your experience uh, experiences uh, with, with our team on, on the few projects that you've done with us? and just that process and working with Juan and, and the team? Yeah, it's great. And it's been a very positive process for us. And we um, uh, we have had the pleasure of, of going through this process firsthand with them. And what I really appreciate, it, re, re, appreciate out of it is sort of the iterative nature, nature of it. And we take this step by step with our client, you know, from the sort of initial massing and the uh, the the line work uh, sort of the, uh, the the initial massing models and and through different levels of finish and um, and detail uh, to the end uh, has allowed us to kind of help keep our clients focused on what's what's an important decision at what phase you know for us too you know it's all about to some degree uh, you know what we care about too is sort of maintaining the integrity of the agreement uh, you know there's there is a a fee that we do it for, uh, and there's, there's a fee that uh, ARC does it for, and, it, and we have to kind of look at this and, and try to, this process helps us stay focused on what's important and not go backwards and not, and not design, not begin to redesign things uh, that are, you know, during a uh, post-documentation phase for us, you know, so we, the process helps us do that, and that's what we one of the things we appreciate most about it, you know, oftentimes this rendering work that's being done as a part of the marketing phase that might be posted on a website um, is being done maybe at the outset of a construction phase. So we really don't have a, we really don't want to engage in a redesign. What we want to do is really go through that process of you know, uh, this high level visualization process and doing it in an orderly manner. And so, you know, working with, with, with Juan and, and the team has been, uh, and certainly a pleasure and they've you know despite the fact that i've mentioned the benefits of kind of holding the the team focused into the contract uh, they've certainly showed a, a deal of flexibility as well now oh, fantastic thank you jeff and and uh, you'll see on the screen right now we're actually uh, uh flashing up some images of of uh jeff's uh, current project um that i believe we just wrapped up or we're very closely wrapping up here um, currently today with with Jeff and and his firm so um, we wanted to make sure that uh, we displayed uh, some of Barton partners information and and uh, uh, project details here just to you know uh, give uh, give Jeff and Barton partners their their due diligence and a thank you for joining the, the webinar today and, and uh, displaying the work that that collectively we've we've uh, uh, found great success in in, in this project. Um, so it's it's yep. definitely a two-way street, right? It's not not just Arc and, and our team 
um, but but collectively and working uh, that communication piece, right? And, and working really closely with Jeff uh, Barton Partners and, and his team and staff as well to really get uh, th these these uh, fantastic looking renderings and, and animations. All right, well, great. Well, I think we can move on to, uh, I think our last slide here, uh, Juan and, uh, and Steph, uh, Stephanie, if you want to jump back on, I think we're in our, our Q&A session. Yeah, thanks, you guys. That was great. Um, I actually received a few questions, um, mostly related to, you know, how big are these files? What is the range um, for each different kind of project? And then how do you how do you share those files out? Okay, maybe I, I can yeah, answer. Yeah, go ahead, yeah. Okay. Well, basically the range of uh, or, the, or the size of the files depends on the type of media. Um, the, um, let's say that the biggest one are the ones um, pertaining to the VR, the virtual reality outputs. Uh, those are practically uh, self-executable files with all the content. And it also depends on how much information they have inside, of course. But basically, they can range from um, 300 megabytes to one gigabyte and can be easily transferred through any type of um, cloud storage platform. We have ours with Arc and also can uh, be uploaded to the one that you prefer, right? Um, yeah. So, so Juan, we, we uh, here at Arc, as, as you know, we use as well, uh, we have a platform called SkySight. Uh, which we um, communicate with our clients uh, with. Uh, there's a free version of SkySight that actually has unlimited storage uh, as well for our clients. Uh, so there'll never be an issue with uh, uh, getting uh, the, the client's uh, uh, visualization data uh, back to them and, and final deliverables back to them or, or from a communication standpoint. But yep, like you said, if, if our, our clients use you know, Google Drive or Dropbox, something of that nature, we're happy to use that as well um, to fit into uh, the, the, the client's uh, uh, environment, so. All right. Awesome. So, Did yep, you have sorry, to add one? Yeah, no, just wanted to wrap up the, the size, the file size idea that when you get to the still images, that it is the, the simplest uh, file size that we have. It is just an image and can be compressed up to the size you need. Um, they may range from two megabytes to 12 megabytes typically. Okay, cool. And then we have a few more questions coming in. They want to know uh, what programs do you need to run these images and fly throughs? Just a web browser, or do you need a special program or a platform? It basically depends on the on the type of project. We are used to uh, apply to several software here, but basically we use Autodesk platforms to prepare professional deliveries and also um, additional type of plugins. But basically the most important part is the uh, file inputs or documentation that won't be uh, restricting the, our work uh, in, in a typical case. Basically we can use uh, PDF files with uh, drawings, also uh, AutoCAD drawings, and we can also work with Revit models um, or 3ds Max models, even SketchUp uh, geometry is also welcome in our workflow. So basically any type of information that you can provide to us is uh, a base for starting the production uh, in our platform. Okay, can, can they view these uh, files on their iPhone, um, their iPad or their tablet? Is it mobile friendly? Yeah, some outputs are mobile friendly, uh, basically the 360 tours. And the progress files can be also shared in a cloud platform in which you can access the model and see the progress uh, on the go at certain points of the process and verify that everything is in its right place, that you can get access to them uh, on the mobile phone and also tablet. 
Okay, and then here's another question. Uh, is the CG work developed and integrated from CAD or BIM files? Yes. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we, we can we can do projects. Uh, I know it might sound a, a little silly, but we can try to develop a project uh, from from something on a napkin. Um, so we just work with the client. That's part of that communication piece. Right. So whatever form um, that 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 you would have uh, your existing, let's say, information, details, drawings in whether it's just AutoCAD or a SketchUp file, uh, we, we, you can send that information over and that'll start our, obviously our, our process uh, standpoint where we'll get together with you uh, on a, on a uh, web call and uh, pull open the documents and information that you provided to us and just walk through that, make sure we're all on the same page with each other uh, from uh, your, 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 uh, existing information to your design uh, intent uh, that, that we want to try to clarify uh, through whatever it is that we're producing for you, whether it's a rendering or animation, and, and then, you know, get into our stages uh, in different steps and walk those through uh, with the client. So not a problem. Whatever, whatever uh, form or fashion that you have the existing, uh, uh, let's say, um, drawings in, if you will, uh, we, we can work with those and and uh, we'll move that forward with the client. Cool, um, here's another question. How easy is the software for a beginner and um, will they need training? Yeah, so uh, you, you really don't have to worry about uh, uh, software integration or, or usability, so to speak. Um, we're gonna deliver the content back into uh, basically a, a plug and play a file uh, if you will. So let's say we did an animation, you're going to receive that file back or you just need a simple uh, a viewer or, or media player. If you do a rendering, uh, we can deliver that back into something as simple as a JPEG or PDF okay. files, whatever that would look like for you. So you don't have to run out and buy, you know, 3ds Max, V-Ray, Lumion, anything of that nature. Um, uh, we'll deliver the content back to you in whatever form that, that is easily trans translated back to you so you can just open it up and, and use it. Great. Um, those are all the questions we received. Um, there are a few more that were covered during the, um, the presentation that came uh, early. <laughs> sure. Um, but yeah, that's it. Uh, I want to thank everyone for joining us today um, and thank our speakers for talking us through this. And um, with that, we'll go ahead and end today's webinar. If you have any questions that you sent through that maybe were answered, we'll make sure to uh, reach out and make sure you guys got your, your question answered. Um, but yeah, thank you everyone and have a great day.